It was one of the bloodiest days, the last two days and this morning, in the last nine months and two days. I would first try to describe what's Gaza, what this monster called Gaza. Gaza, part of Palestine, it's 365 square kilometers only. So it's very small. 2.4 million people living in it. And that makes it one of the most dense populated area on Earth. It's like small city, big village. Everybody knows everybody. In Gaza, in 1948, when the Nakba occurred, two-thirds of its population came to be refugees. So its unique structure of Gaza, one-third citizens and two-thirds are refugees. That in, in, in human politics, very explosive combination, unique one. In 1967, Gaza was reoccupied after it was administered by Egypt 19 years. Israel occupied it, and for the last 57 years, with West Bank, including East Jerusalem, became under occupation. So the occupation reunified us again people in Gaza, West Bank, and Jerusalem. Five years severe resistance was in Gaza after the occupation. It was suppressed by killing thousands of people who resisted the occupation legitimately. And in the course of the occupation, there was the first intifada, and it wasn't coincident that it came from Jabalia refugee camp, the biggest refugee Palestinian camp in the Middle East, and then spread all over the place for six years. The unique thing in the intifada, first intifada, that Israel was saying, Gaza and West Bank is the good example for Arab-Israeli coexistence and peace. People are happy, and they are enjoying their life. They don't think about Palestine. And for six years, every day, every hour, people voted with the stones, tires, with thousands of people who has been shot and killed from zero distance while they were demonstrating with their bare hands and chests. They were voting, I mean, for civil determination, independent, and Palestine. Oslo Accords, the miserable Oslo Accords, which I never thought it would bring any peace. Because they didn't say one word, one single word about the occupation. Shifted the occupied territories to a new brand of apartheid where Israel have full fledged to build the settlements, expand the settlements, make new settlements, 
confiscate land, suppression, oppression. And soon after that, the Second Intifada erupted. And the Second Intifada erupted on the harvest since it began till today. Tens of thousands of people has been killed. Hundreds of thousands of people has been arrested as well. Gaza was subject to five wars between 2008, 7, 12, 14, 21, 22, 23 May. And there was the Great March of Return, where people, civilians, demonstrating peacefully, shot like flies. Now, October 7th, obviously, it's not the beginning of the story. That's what I want to say. And this colonial racist twist, when they adopted the slogan that Israel do have the right of self-defense, they know that they were lying, misleading, not speaking the truth. but making the victim for the hundred time another victim. In totally unjust, unfair, illogical way. Since when occupation can have the right of self-defense? Occupation definition according to Rome statute, it's a crime of aggression. Criminals, occupiers, people who dead, not according to our standards, but according to the book, according to international law, international humanitarian law, according to UN agencies, rapporteurs, said in simply clear way. This is criminal belligerent occupation should be held accountable. Many were saying, you Arabs are demagogue, you Palestinians are lunatics. You just speak words and words, unpaced. Political rhetoric, hate rhetoric. You don't speak based on facts, standards, evidence. We fixed ourselves, rightly. And we exhausted the Israeli legal system, who is considered the best in the West. It's one of the good examples for justice. And it should be inspired by the Middle Eastern countries. This is the oasis of democracy. We look at that, and it was the legal cover for the very organized systematic war crimes by, perpetrated by the criminal belligerent occupation government and the army. When we concluded this, and we came with organization like Pitsalem, respected independent one, with the book, its title, genuinely unable, genuinely unwilling about accountability of those who violated the law, we tried to resort to international mechanisms. So we began to do UJ cases 
Geneva, US, London, Madrid, Auckland, New Zealand, South Africa, Sweden, name it. We were blocked, not legally, politically. Blocked, meaning they changed the laws. A foreign minister like Maratinius in Madrid says, it's a shame that our Audiencia Nacional give a restaurant against six of the Israeli leaders. We will change the law. Sorry to believe me. In seven months, they changed the law. UK went with the same footsteps afterwards, etc. So we were blocked, literally, by political will. Then we said, let us go to the, to the court for no man's court. It's the ICC. And we went there with all hurdles, obstacles, Palestine signed, ratified, Rome statute, and it became state party in January 2015. And we invested our best. Till December 2019. Fantastic. Mr. Ben, Madame Ben Souda referred the case, which today UK have submission against. And they said, I'll go to the pre-trial chamber to rule out whether Rome statue applicable in Gaza, including East Jerusalem or not. It took it two years till January, till February 2021, and they said yes. Rome statue have jurisdiction on the occupied territories. She formed a month later the investigative body. And Mr. KK took over June. Since June till today, the pyramids moved one single step. Unusual, which is having warrant arrest against two of the Israelis and three from the Palestinian Hamas leaders. And I don't know why he issued that before the pre-trial chamber endorse it and give decision on it. I don't know and I don't understand or digest his behavior in this case, which is totally illogical according to the rule of law, according to the normative procedures at the court. We didn't ask ICC to investigate October 7th. Our cases related to 2014 to 2017 Great March of Return to 2021, 22, 23. None of these has been investigated yet. They refuse to receive one single file yet. And that's another dosage of confusion. He refused till January 11, till the day of session of the ICJ to meet with us as representatives of the Palestinian victims. We were having real serious dilemma. 
when October 7th began because few of us who were chatting directly or through a group named after two weeks of the war, the genocide group, that wasn't coincident. Facts on the ground were simple, clear, like crystal. Blind cannot see it only. There was clear cut statements on the political level. The president of the state of Israel, Herzog, said, I don't distinguish between civilians and Hamas. Every Palestinian in Gaza complicit and responsible, and they will be held accountable. We will not discriminate. They brought them, they will be held accountable. Prime Minister said simple sentence. Gazans should leave Gaza. Just as simple as that. Where to? Gallant, the Minister of Defense, <coughs> said for Gazans, there will be no water. Water. There will be no food. Food. There will be no electricity. And there will be no fuel. In less than 24 hours, the death was coming from the sky and the sea and the land. Every place in Gaza was bombed. I lived all my life. One way ticket at that part of the world. But I never ever in my life thought anything like that close to that might happen. I, I mean, we are talking about 365 square kilometers. And Gaza was already subjugated to five wars. And you can smell the death every time this is happening. You can feel the destruction. But in a few days, you would see entire areas disappeared, doesn't exist, totally destroyed. I'm talking about residential areas. Towers with 12, 14 stories, people in it. I mean, they are there living in it. Houses, bakeries, people standing, I mean, to buy bread. Boom. Tens are killed in one stroke. Desalination water plants, you donated with it like 1.2 billion dollars cost, vanished. Sewage system has been bombed. Hospitals began to be attacked. This morning, you know, there is a storm regarding Children's Hospital in Ukraine has been bombed. We have three children hospital, one of them for cancer patients of children, Rantisi Hospital. Erased with all the people in it. It's not an issue. And they began asking people to evacuate the north and to go to the south. And they designate for them areas to move from here to there. Where to? Where to go? And we never 
knew anything called starvation or famine at that part of the world. UNRWA, it's the de facto government in Gaza, not Hamas. They provide services for 85% of Gazans in health, education, and social affairs. 85% depend on UNRWA rations, I mean to be disputed in Gaza because of the blockade for 17 years. They were targeted, bombed, and their storage has been bombed. Storage of medicine and food, etc. They are the biggest distributor in Gaza. So the intent <coughs> is there. And the practice is there. And they go from one place to another. And that's why we concluded very early, Shapas, Katie, myself, other friends, about this. This is a genocide. Now, we anticipated, expected, the world moves. Do something. Because for the first time ever, genocide being broadcasted at the real time on air, and the whole world, I mean, seeing it, whether ordinary people or politicians, but what we witnessed, unprecedented wave of support by Europe and US to Israel and their right of self-defense. Get them! Is it matter of ignorance? No. Is it a matter of blind political support? Absolutely. And the support, it's not only political, it's not only emotional. It's as well, I mean, with money and arms. Israeli store of ammunition finished after 40 days of the war. And we are bombed, killed, destroyed, genocide by the Western bombs. I don't know what guilt the 15,000 Gaza children did with the West in order to be punished and to be killed as such. Two points, I'll go with it in polit way, I mean, very quick. One, we are very rewarded of the people in the world who knew really what's happening, not through the official media, but through the social media, rather. And they acted, reacted. We were very proud, and this is extra strength for us. The second, we have to distinguish between governments. In Europe, I think, Ireland, Spain, Belgium, Luxembourg, Slovenia, 
and Norway did a great job and they were able to speak truth to power and to remind everybody there is standards and we should act accordingly. Three, the South, represented by South Africa, Brazil, and some others, showed real commitment for rule of law, for standards, and they showed moral superiority, reminding the entire West. You cannot act, act like old Rome rules. In old Rome, it used to be law for masters, not for slaves. So with us, with Palestinians, with Arabs, Africano, Latino, Asians, rule of jungle can be applicable, but not the rule of law. And I think that's something should be really thought about and, and considered very seriously. We are passing through the worst time ever in our history. We are paying very, very high price by souls, blood, pain, and suffering. Gaza already in habitable place. That's what the Israeli made it. We are far from the rule of law, and they want us to lose hope in rule of law or in dignity. But I'm telling you, as a Gazan, as Palestinian, as citizen of the world, sharing the same standards, values like you, we will never give up. And we have no right to give up. We do have no right to be good victims for anybody, especially for criminals, and especially for those who are doing genocide. No power on earth will take the hope and strategical optimism from our heart or mind. We are defending just for right cause. We are strong, much stronger with the support of free committed people across the globe. We know we are in the right side of history and tomorrow definitely will be ours and one day we shall overcome. Thank you.